don't know if I trust it, though, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing? Happy Sunday to you. Uh, make sure that uh, everybody can see us and hear us okay. That's always the big thing. Got the computer running down here below. If you somebody can give me a shout out and let us know that you can see us, hear us okay, we'll move on from there. We'll just wait on that. <laughs> There's a lag. There's like a 15 second lag, so we might be waiting a couple <laughs> seconds here. All right, I see West Michigan here. I see Warren Wetzel saying his she or he can see us and hear us great. Blind Osprey's here, Mike F, Brian Kerber, Pat Enos, a whole bunch of people. Jim Dombrowski, Chad Kapla from Lake Ann is saying hello. How are you doing, Chad? Phil Odrin's here. Evening back to you. Mike F saying Lima Charlie loud and clear. We got uh, we got a special guest here tonight. Uh, I'm sure many of you people know him from his YouTube channel. But Adam Knudsen is here. I'm sorry, Captain Adam Knudsen is here from Hiatus Charters. Yeah. Good thanks, to see you. Thanks for having me, Oh, Chris. thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Um, Adam runs a great YouTube channel. If you have not seen it, Real to Real Outdoors on YouTube. Yeah. Tell us a little, about, a little bit about it. Well, uh, Real to Real started just about a year ago. And uh, I generally don't ever have very much time. And I, due to the pandemic, I had time. You got more time and, all of uh, a sudden? Yeah. Right? So I started, started it up, and we've been having a really good time. We do the um, Captain's Round Tables, our big... Yeah. our big thing and we have new episodes coming up uh probably as, uh, they'll start next week so you'll see a, a whole bunch more we're just kind of did some tv show style stuff uh yeah. over the winter and that was fun good you got you run a great channel um i was lucky lucky enough to be a guest down there one time yep. enjoyed myself down there with the other captains but uh, you put a lot of good information out there uh, so if you have not seen his channel, Real to Real Outdoors on YouTube, check it out. Um, yeah, and your Captain's Roundtable, that's a great, great product. That's, that's fun, there. you know. I mean, uh, there, salmon fishing is, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And you, <laughs> and they're all successful. And there's not one guy that has all the right things. Nope. You know, and, and if, you know, somebody's saying this is the only way you can do this, they're not telling the truth. And nope. that's kind of the whole philosophy with uh, Real to Real Outdoors is like, let's just, Put out a bunch of really good information mm -hmm. that's normally not not really available exactly so. yeah you, your channel my channel a few other ones um seem to seem to be the few that yeah. do put out a lot of information uh I, i've never had a problem with giving out information i was lucky enough i didn't grow up around here i grew up downstate sure um, i've been up here almost 25 years now so when i came up here i was lucky enough to meet uh, paul schlafly at oh, Riverside, yeah, sure. yep. and he uh he got me hooked right there and looking back i should have just taken my life savings, put it in a pile and caught it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, college fun? Nah, throw that on there too. You know, <laughs> car? Nah, throw it all on there. But that's what they say. You know, the biggest, your biggest fear is if, if you die, your wife sells your stuff or what you told her. Right, to pay what, for what it, you right? said you paid for yeah. it. <laughs> no, I, I was real lucky though to get with Paul and then of course meet some of the other charter guys and uh, that just got me hooked. Of course, I grew up chasing bass and walleye and pike down where I grew up, and the natural transition was to. The king salmon sure and once i caught one it's addicting i was done i was absolutely done so yeah but going back to the information i was lucky to have the people that, yep. that taught me you were too i know you've been on the water your whole life basically yep. well i never salmon fished though no nope. um so i never salmon fished uh just here and there a little bit my dad wasn't into it really mm -hmm. and, and uh when i was about oh 18 or 19 years old one of my friends his dad bought captain chucks back in the day oh, okay and that's where it all kind of started and, and they they bought a boat and we started fishing and that was about it right? yeah so once you like you said once you're there you're yeah, done the first time you hear a diver getting smoked it's, yeah. that's it. the first time i watched <laughs> the downrigger go off and i grabbed onto that thing and watched that line peel out faster than i could you know, comprehend i was done absolutely done yeah and then when you just think you got that fish beat he takes two or three more big runs on you, and yeah, it, it, it really, it's like uh, opening day of deer season every morning. I mean, that's just really, <laughs> it really awesome. It really is. You never know when that first rod's going to yeah. go off and which one it's going to be. Hey, but uh, going back to the information thing, well, one thing you said, I can't agree with more. Just, just the information. Take it in. There's so many different ways to do it. Yeah. Um, there's not a wrong way to do it. That's one thing I stress here all the time. And the best teacher is failure. Yeah, go absolutely. out there. Just go out there and do it. And if you screw something up, guess what? We've screwed plenty of things up. I, I guarantee I have. I'm sure you have also. That's, oh, yeah. that's how you learn is from your mistakes. And when you figure out something that really works, boy, you stick with that. 
Yeah, when yeah. we, uh, you, you know, like my dad, I kind of taught my dad how to salmon fish, and uh, you know, he'd always ask me, well, "Well, how do you how do you know how to do that, or how do you do this?" I go, "I mean, you just mess it up so many times." Right. If you've ever met a cap charter captain that's not good at getting a tangle out, right. You know, and right. it, it, it isn't from reading. No, no. Yeah, and that's why I say a first, ma a good first mate is worth their weight in gold. Oh, absolutely. When if the if you can handle the rest of things going on with the boat, you know, setting lines, netting fish, taking care of customers, and he's working on tangles and other things that happen. Boy, that's a that, that is a lifesaver right there. But uh, yeah. Anyway, but thank you for being yeah, here no tonight, problem. Adam. I'm I really excited. really appreciate it. Uh, tonight's topic is going to be spoons, and it's going to be back to basics. And what I mean by that is we're just going to strip it right down. We're going to go back to the fundamentals. We're going to talk about spoons, how you can fish them, um, what presentations you fish them on, some of our favorites throughout the different times of the year, and uh, maybe, some, maybe some things that we have made errors on in the past uh, on spoons, and we won't do that again. Sure. Yeah, but let's see who we got here. we got a, we got a bunch of people on here now. Andy K. Everett Van Der Heide. West Michigan says love reel to reel, so you got a awesome. fan there. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the people that are on here also watch your videos. Yeah, so. I hope so. Yeah, I hope, I hope so they too. Hit that, uh, the the bell and the, yeah. the sub button. Go ahead and do that for you. Make sure yeah. stop by the channel. <laughs> <laughs> that helps with the uh, the people that help make it all work. It does. So. Yep, yeah, it does. Uh, what else we got going on? Ron McDougall's here. Hey guys, it's almost that time, and he's absolutely right. It is almost that time. We'll talk Get about close. that a little. Ryan Purchase here, uh, he says, reel to reel and tangle tackle are, my, are his two. He never misses them. So thanks, Ryan. Ryan's, good. Ryan's a good dude. Ryan just got both. Yeah, I know. He was I, just in here on, yesterday. It's, I saw it's on its way soon, I think. Yeah, he's the poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's done. Should have just booked about 20 charters. <laughs> <laughs> Probably save him money. <laughs> yeah, get ready, Ryan. Uh, you'll, you're going to love it, though. Uh, having a boat is uh, one of the greatest things and one of the worst things in the world. But uh, my sister Laura says hello. Hey Laura, how you doing? And Dakota Joe is here. Dakota Joe is always on here. Good to see. Good to see him. You can't, if you ever see the guy, you'll never miss him. He's like uh, seven feet tall and just a giant dude. What a nice guy though. Always, always happy to see him. Uh, Rand Kruger says if learning from mistakes is the secret, he must be Einstein. Yeah, probably me too, man. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, couple things, couple housekeeping things to uh, to go over real quick. If you can't tell, I have some new lights going on right now. It looks a little dimmer than it normally does. I'm experimenting with different light colors, just trying to enhance the channel a little. Um, if this is something that you like, hey, let me know in the comments. If it's something that you don't like, let me know that also. It's a learning process and I'm always trying to figure things out. Uh, also, gotta let you know, Sunday Night Live Stream, proudly sponsored by Dreamweaver Lures. Check them out, Dreamweaver the Lure, dreamweaverlures.com. They have the absolute stuff, best stuff out there. We might have some Dreamweaver stuff to show you here soon. But yeah, I'm a huge Dreamweaver fan. I know you are also. Absolutely. Yeah. They you, make incredible products. They really do. And they're good people. Absolutely. That's yeah. what I really like about them is I can go down there, I can sit down, have a cup of coffee, and just talk like we're all good friends, which we are. Yep. But it's nice. There's no pretension there. There's no... There's nothing that makes me feel like I'm not always welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yep. good people. Good people. Jason C. just sent me a super chat. Jason, I appreciate that. I don't have my super chat reel right here, but just trust me that I do appreciate you uh, helping support the channel. Thank you very much for doing that. Also, piggybacking on the Dreamweaver thing. The Dreamweaver kit is up and ready on the Tangle Tackle website, tangletacklecompany.com. If you search Chris and Scott or just Chris or Scott, you will find that. This month's package is all about spring fishing. So you're gonna get three coho uh, mini spinnies. I call them baby spinnies. Oh, yeah. uh, you're gonna get three Dreamweaver coho flies. You're gonna get, I believe, six really, really good spring spoons. And you're gonna get a Dreamweaver hat with all that at a really good price. So check that out, Dr or I'm sorry, uh, tangletacklecompany.com. That is up, ready to go. And uh, as always, they're in limited supply, and once they are gone, they are gone. So make sure you get yours before they do run out. Dennis with the ninja boards. Yeah. Ninja it, board is a game changer. Dude, I could I, talk about that forever. Dude, I tell you what. I said this, I think, just last week. Um, when the ninja board came out, I, I didn't know what to think. I really didn't, because I've run about every board out there. Yep, you too. name it, I've probably had my hands on it one time or another. And when the Dreamweaver Ninja came out, 
I thought to myself, another, it's just another board. Yeah. You know, before I ran it. Yep. And then I ran it. Yep. And I couldn't believe how good that I, thing I was. I called Shane and I said, hey, Shane, can I try one, one of those boards out? He goes, well, you really need to, you know, try a whole side. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, well. Uh, he goes, just go down to my boat and take, you know, take all my port boards right. or whatever it was. We ran them. And that was, I think, the last day that we didn't run, you know, or the, you know, the, the end of the, the, the churches and the, the, yeah, the offshore. I, mean, I know. And, they, and they're good boards too. And they, they are. And they really are all, oh, all not... good companies, but oh, they yeah. really, for what we do here, they're awesome. And the little boards are awesome too. Oh, I agree. I, yep. I love them. The I agree. The flag is, yep. I just released a co video and we, you know, that was the first time that we'd really, I was Sam could, and had the flag going up. And oh, that. you could see the, the, probably the, uh, the. The, the dink on there, you know, dragging yep, that thing yep, around. Yep, those That's matters. really nice about those things, too. Uh, all right, yeah, Ninja Boards, if you haven't checked them out yet, make sure you do. They are, what's the biggest presentation you ever pulled on a Ninja Board? For me, it's a 450. Um, yeah, probably 450. Yeah, no we have We have some, I have a 600 and 550, a 500, but um, we don't, I don't know that I, I've really ran them since... I got Ninja Boards. I yeah. used to run them on 44s. Yeah. And they run good. On they do on the TX 44s. We yeah. actually yeah. made a we made a diver, wire diver. It's 500 feet of wire. Mm-hmm. And then it was uh, a little bit of uh, maybe 10 feet of 40 pound mono. Okay. And then braid back. Okay. And we would run that diver on zero. And we'd let it out 500 feet. Mm-hmm. And then we'd put it on a 44 and swim it outside our divers yeah, that's a unique presentation it. yeah it doesn't work no, <laughs> it's like the worst tangles you ever had but you know i mean it's one of those things we just talked about when not you, everything we do works no it doesn't <laughs> like when you screw something up that's one of those things when you screw it up you don't it probably costs you, a couple hundred dollars you to don't, replace all the stuff oh, that you we don't do it again. <laughs> and that's the other uh, big learning uh big the boot to the head when you really learn something is when you start shelling out hundred dollar bills no. to replace the things that you just screwed up because you're an idiot that's when you really learn. And uh, I get people actually that ask me this all the time, divers behind boards. And I always tell them, no, don't, please don't, don't go that route. Divers are fine on their own. They're their yeah. own presentation. Let the boards be on the copper and the steel well, and the lead core. You know, walleye fishing and stuff, you do it. You can, because it's smaller though. And, but it's smaller. Yeah. And, and they're not doing as many crazy things. But even with those, we'll run those little uh, Big John. Yeah, the mini discs. Mini discs, yeah. yeah. Yep. And, you know, if, if that gets turned at all, mm-hmm. it's not running at zero. Right. It, you're instantly tangled. It's going to go I mean, in it's it's just, gonna go it's your awful. spread. Yeah. yeah. So, Chad Kapla sent a super chat also. Chad, thank awesome. you so much for doing that. You're a good guy. Good people on here. I tell you what. Um, so, what do we got? Shot 16 says, uh, my wife Anka watching for the first time ever. Well, thanks for being here, both of you. I appreciate that. Uh, and a lot of other people, Jason Wilkerson, he's from Team Kicker on here. Jason, how's that new boat treating you? I think you got it in the water now that you you said, I think, a couple of weeks ago it that should be in good. the water. I saw that I rampage. Saw, yeah. Oh, I know. Those are nice boats. Those are nice boats. Those are really nice boats. A um, couple things I got to throw out there, though. The computer I'm looking at right now, we're at 14%. There's a good chance this may go down before we get to the end of this video. If it does, that's fine. We'll fight through it. I got another phone in my pocket. I can bring that out for, for chat and, is, you know, just talking that way also. Uh, all right. Ryan Person says he still needs some more boards. <laughs> They're at my house, Ryan. <laughs> all right. Um, there was something else I was going to shout out there, and I can't remember right off the top of my head what it was. So I'll circle back to that later. But let's talk about spoons. Is something good going on here? Oh, somebody's asking. Ryan's asking. Oh, Braider Mono, mono. Uh, board sections. Um, so... He's asking, should he put a piece of mono in there to hook his board on? So, if you're running, if you're running braid, if you, so we run all braid back, braid back on everything, and, and it really does help with the wind. Mm-hmm. It cuts through the the air better than mono does. You don't get those big droops in your in your uh, line from your rod. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're using a church board, um, then yeah, I I've always put the mono in there, and it keeps it from slipping. It does. But the ninja boards, you do not need it. And I have a video on my site where we talk about the pin on the ninja board and how to how to use it. Yeah, I got I have and one. And the whole thing, it. and it's it's just it's a rock great board. solid. Yeah, I put that board. thing on there, and uh, I was going to break that arm on that thing before I pulled it through the board. Yeah. It's that solid. Um, see, now that's that's funny. You say you're all braid. 
Um, that's how captains differ because I'm almost all mono. Yeah. I prefer the mono. I think it just gives me a little more fighting power over the fish, a little stretchability. A little stretch, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it just you're 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 not doing it wrong either way. No. No, you're not. And that's great. That's a great example right there of how two people can do two different, completely different things. But of course, you have won the Ludington Offshore Classic, and I have not. We got lucky. You know, you're a good fisherman. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna buy that for a second. You got. You run a good boat. We, um, we have. We have, uh, we have great people, and uh, we have a great network, network of people that we yeah, work with. And, and I know it you makes do. a big difference. I'll put it this way: when I heard um, your name called as the winner, I was not surprised. Yeah. Uh, I was not surprised. So I was. Uh, I was. An, be humble. All, be humble all you want. You're of course, right. I fished up here. So. I know you I, did. And then you fish in Mesa I, County. I, I, I didn't even fish that tournament. I was running charters that day, so. You made money. And, uh, well, you there did, you go. You did, too. Once. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Once. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Once. All the, all the other times we've run that tournament and uh, have not made money, no doubt about it. All right. Hey, let's talk about spoons, though. Yeah. Let's, let's break it down to the basics on spoons. What is a spoon? Let's start right there. I'm going to grab... The old Rasta Goose here to start off. I'm gonna break this thing out of its package. Making George happy. No, oh, is he, is he a like Goose guy? Favorite. That thing, I think he doesn't even use a swivel, he just ties them directly on. Uh, these are good spoons. That Golden Goose last year for me was really, really good too. But let's, uh, let's just talk about spoons in general. Let's take a look at one. If you've never seen a spoon, if you've never run one, hey, we've all been there before. None of us were born knowing what a spoon is. So that is a salmon spoon right there. They're generally, they generally come in three sizes. For Dreamweaver, it's super slim. The medium size is called their standard, and then their larger size is called mag. Uh, a lot of other company or other companies do it other ways. They might call their uh, their smallest one one word another word for the medium and the other. but generally i've seen always mag for the big spoons yeah pretty yeah, much yeah. yeah pretty much the standard right there but that right there is a super slim so in dreamweaver that is the smallest one they make i will grab a standard size you can actually see the difference in the size and then the mag is even bigger than that so in general i, I, I hate talking in generalities but usually three different sizes of spoons yeah. Um, small, medium, and large. And of course, there's going to be different times of the year you're going to fish one over the other one. Yep. But uh, honestly, that super slim right there. That's a great nice spoon. It's almost always out someplace in the spread. But uh, any presentation, really. Downriggers. Yep. Divers, slide divers, um, lead core, copper, weighted steel, all the above, and then some. Yep. These things will produce for you on a daily basis. Uh, and they are they're easy 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 to use it's not like a meat rig where you got to assemble something together no. it's not like a flash or fly where you got to measure off your leaders you got to get the right hooks on there um, if you're changing hooks or whatnot with a spoon basically you pop it out of the package you throw it on a swivel or tie it direct i prefer swivels some yeah. guys run direct no though and you throw it out there and you're fishing and uh, really it's that simple with a spoon but there's a lot more to it than just that there always is there is a there, there always <laughs> is so let's uh let's talk about the different sizes maybe when you use one over the others so i probably like not the the best guy for this conversation Perfect. because I'm i don't it. i don't live by certain sizes at certain times okay and i run a big mixture of spoons at the same time i do too yeah, so, so it, we're going to talk the same same yeah. language then, and, but some guys do. Some yeah, guys, some guys like, are yeah. all mags. Now the only the only the only caveat for me is Adam when it's springtime. I run sure. a, I run almost all super slims. That's that's really the biggest time for me when they're almost all the same size out there. Yep. I don't know about you. Uh, actually, I, I run quite a few mags. Do you, in the in and the spring do really well on browns. Okay. On, cool. on mag spoons, and I learned that from uh, Polecat. Oh, yeah. You know, he he always ran. He always had a diver next to the boat. You could see the spoon back there. Okay. And he would catch browns in his prop, prop wash. No kidding. It was unbelievable. That wash. is unbelievable because you would think of browns. You never think that would happen. Browns are such skittish fish. Yeah. You wouldn't think that they'd come up in the prop wash and grab that big spoon. But hey, I just learned something right there. But yeah, you're the same as me. Um, throughout the year, I might have say I'm running 15 rods. Five might have slims. Four might have mags. Two yeah. might have standards <laughs> and a mix of other things out there. I, I think, um, you know, speed, speed is a critical uh, deciding factor when you're, when you're fishing different spoons. Yeah. And I think if you pay more attention to 
how fast you're going and what spoons are working, yeah. you, you'll start to make a lot of uh, connections yeah. in that in that program. Um, but there's so many varieties of yeah. spoons. I mean, you have Stingers and Silver Streaks and Dreamweavers and Moonshines and Moonshines. Dex and Yex, uh, yep. It just goes on and on. Warriors, you yep. know, and, and Bro King, you Bro name King, it. Yeah. Yeah. They're all out there. And they all fish a little bit different. They do. They do. Um, Dreamweaver, of course, for me is what I'm almost always going to. Sure. Moonshine's not far behind. Yep. But Dreamweaver Super Slims, I guess if I was going to boil it down to brass tacks here and say, if you're going to go out and buy some spoons for the boat and you're wavering one way or the other on what size I need to get, you're not going to go wrong picking up super slims. No, not at all. No. And you can really, that's an awesome spoon in that you can troll that at three and a half miles an hour and you can troll it at 1.8. Yep. And it catches fish both. And and we catch a lot of walleye on those. Oh, yeah. You know, Lake Erie on super slims. Yes. So it's really like an all the way around across the board. Yeah, they they, they actually really hit it out of the park when they came up with this design. Let me ask you something though, Adam, real quick. Just captain to captain. Nobody's sure. listening or anything. <laughs> Do you put a bend in your spoons? Um, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't generally know. I, I will say generally no, but um, there's certain spoons that yeah. we, we cup them a little bit. I do too. Um, and but there's so, if you have if you have ten. So I mean, as a charter captain, I have a dozen of one spoon, same color. Same size. Mm-hmm. I have, you know, a lot of spoons. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll find in that box of spoons that are all identical, that two or three of them will catch more fish than the rest, yeah. and yep. that's probably a yep. little bend or, yep. you know, a little change. Yep. Now, do, do you uh, change your hooks? No, uh, I do not. And I, I have in the past, and I actually found my catch rate to go down. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Uh, I think Especially so. if you're changing the size. No, I, I think the, the spoon manufacturers know what they're doing when they're putting the hooks on there. Uh, they're And really, everybody was running good hooks. They are. You know, yep. Dreamweaver's all VMC. VMC. Yep. Yaks are all VMCs. Yes. You know, yep. They're not putting a junk hook on there. Yeah, if you, I found when I start changing hooks, the weight is what changed yep. the, the action of the spoon. And my... my Normal go-to spoons, the ones that always catch fish, weren't catching fish all of a sudden. Yeah. So it was buy with that, go back to the hooks that uh, that came with the spoons. Matt President, hey, thanks for the super chat, bud. Very nice of you. Thanks for emailing me last night also. I'm looking forward to doing that thing that you and I talked about. Really, co- really cool. Um, but yeah, a little bend every now and then. That doesn't hurt. And a little fish bend every now and then. You're, I'm not surprised you say that. I had a, uh, I had a moonshine last year, a glow bloody nose. It had a bit, no, it was, I can't remember what it was, doesn't matter. It had a fish bend in it, yep. and that thing took a fish every time out yep. there. And it was the wonkiest action you could ever imagine. All right. So different sizes, different speeds. Speed's a great, great topic. Um, you already touched on it. Super slim, really all the way down to 1.5, really 1 eight. Yeah, all the way up to near 3.0, 3.5. Mag spoons, I have found, run much better at higher speeds. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, for mags, for the most part, for mags, I run in moonshine. So I don't mm-hmm. I don't run yeah. too, I mean, fuzzy bears. Yeah, uh, mag fuzzy bears are phenomenal. Yes, they are. They're from Dreamweaver uh, product as well. Captain Carl, you know, he knew what he was doing when he came up with that one. Yes, that's he a great, did. That's a great spoon. There's going to be some. Oh. Uh, there's going to be some I hear this year. Oh, good. Rumor. Okay. Rumor. Glad to hear Rumor that. Mill. All right, let's not know. let's we'll not see. get everybody crazy out there. <laughs> <laughs> Start hunting them down. Yeah, fuzzy bears are great. Their mags are especially really, and, good. and they're really similar. Uh, you know, the moonshine mag yeah. and fuzzy bear mags are very similar. Spoons. And I, and I, I'm with you on that, Adam. When I go to mags, it's it's a lot of moonshines. Yeah. They I think they really got it down well um, when they when they have their when they came up with their mags for the moonshines. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and they have excellent colors too. They do. Yeah, they, they really do. really do. Uh, one thing I do like to do, and I call it match the hatch, and I'm sure that's a term you've probably heard sure. before. Mm-hmm. If you're cleaning your fish, I'm cleaning my fish, and I'm seeing small alewives inside there, I go to the smaller spoons. I yep. start, like the next morning, I'll yep. put a lot of smaller ones. Yep. And vice versa, if I see a lot of large alewife in there, and the last couple of years we've had some boncos, um, I go to bigger spoons. Yeah, you could have like a nine-inch spoon last year. You could have. There was some unbelievable alewives. Yeah, there's like, a couple. I, I don't know how many master angler alewives I have. <laughs> <laughs> I think I played a couple up and actually ate them. They were absolutely ginormous. But uh, so speed-wise, you're not going to go wrong. Super slim. The medium size is also a great universal spoon. You can also run slow up to the uh, higher speeds. 
Mag spoons, the moonshines also run really well from medium speeds up to high speeds. And even the moonshines I find even run pretty darn well at lower speeds. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you get a handful of good looking spoons there. All right, what do you got? So uh, I started grabbing these spoons to bring in and I'm like, oh, I'll just grab the ones that, I, that have been working for me. And I've started to notice that they all have dots on them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what, yep. I don't know if it's me as a fisherman, I'm attracted to the dots, but we've been catching tons of fish on, on these dot spoons. And uh, of course the wart frog, probably the oldest the yak. Spoon out, oh, yeah. yak, white yep. back wharf frog. Yep, well, look that at what thing I was unbelievable last year. Yep. And I know you fished the, a ton of the SS. Love, love, love the glow frog with the white belly from Dreamweaver and Super Slim. And I mean, if you look at the two of them, they're uh, pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. And they both got white backs on them. Yep. Something about that white back really is a game changer. I'd like, to see, a, I'd like to see more white backs on other spoons, to be honest with you. You know, we started running some of those old spoons, like the Yak M&M. Um, the wart frog mm -hmm. uh, in that egg shelly yeah, finish, egg yeah. uh, dull finish, and they really produce, you know. And then you started to see a lot of this stuff with, uh, well, there's some new, you know, the gold, you know, it's not, you know everybody's starting to fish these gold blanks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, that's, I would run that for walleye, but. Tell you what, that's been a great spoon. That JJ, is that the and JJ Mac? JJ one? Mac on a gold. On a gold, yeah. yeah. Yep, that's one thing I found over the last couple of years. Um, early in the spring, especially, seems gold seems to really, really shine. And uh, later in the year, around the pierheads, I found in that yeah, dirty, water, dirty water, that yeah. gold really, really takes off. But that uh, that uh, Rasta goose right there, I call it the golden goose because it's a gold blank. That thing last year for me was unstoppable. Yeah. Unstoppable on a three color, four color, five color, seven color in the morning. We and started fishing some gold spin doctors as well. Yeah. And uh, those, they, they had their days. Yeah. But when they were on, yeah. they were unbelievable. Yep. You yep. know, that was mainly a tr with trout, but um, yeah, yeah. What, what an awesome uh, You know, you, awesome see, stuff. you see a lot of people that, uh, I go on forums and whatnot, and I, I see people posting their old lures online. Sure. You just these giant lots of old Northport nailers yep. or yaks. Um, some of the older spoons, and I think people get in that mindset. Well, they're old; they're, they're not going to work anymore. Don't throw those away. Don't 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 give the gold away. <laughs> don't you know? Don't just uh, sell them off because they're they're old, and you think you got to have these. List them and just let me know. Yeah, let Adam I'll know. Let, let, let me know. Maybe we'll go <laughs> have these on. But uh, yeah, I, I see that all the time, and I think don't. There's nothing wrong with the spoons that you probably have. Nothing wrong with having some newer ones in there as well. But a lot of those older ones are still going to work just fine for you. All right, let's see what we missing here on the uh, chat. Let's make sure we're good. Um, <laughs> somebody said the screen froze, but no, it's then there, people are saying no, um, it's all good. Can't go wrong with the blue jeans and the green jeans. Yeah, a couple yeah. other ones. A couple the, other ones. The green jeans is one of those spoons that, when that came out, it was like unbelievable. You know, just a great oh, spoon. game changer. And then you know, if you look at like. So the Dreamweaver green jeans glows green, mm -hmm. and the the green jeans from uh, Moonshine. Moonshine glows blue. Yeah. So like, that's another thing with spoons, especially is pay attention to that color of the glow yeah. itself, and uh, usually you have to change brands to mm -hmm. get different glows. But, you do. Um, that's something I think people overlook. Yeah, I, I think sure. you're absolutely right. Uh, especially early in the morning when it's a little more prevalent or a darker day yeah. or something like that. And then the dots. I don't know what it is with yeah, the dots. But the dots work. So what? we have Bloody Nose, SS Bloody Nose we run all the time. And uh, we decorated it with That's dots. The Moonshine yeah. so RV Bloody Nose. We yeah. took, we took the, the Dreamweaver one and we put black dots all over it. And I tell you what, that spoon's incredible. Well, it was about five years ago, dots just started becoming a thing. Yeah, yeah. it's and just then, crazy. And now Spotted like, dolphin from Moonshine, that's been a, a, a killer one for I us. I don't know what it is about the dots, but definitely. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, presentations though. Sure. What are some of your pr favorite presentations for spoons? Do you have some that uh, yeah. outshine on the others? <clears throat> I mean, light cores. Yeah. I love, uh, you know, especially those higher cores, you know, the, the 10, 10, 7, five yeah. situations um out of temperature yeah uh i even when we're you know fishing in the fall and we we have staging kings and stuff and we're fishing up in that warm water there, there's a lot of times you know everybody's like oh, i'll put plugs on everything 
I almost always have a two or three color yeah. with, with a spoon on yeah, it. Yeah, you should. And oftentimes, a uh, uh, SS bloody nose is out there. Oh, it's some kind of glow spoon, and you'd be surprised how many fish you catch up in that warm water absolutely. on that spoon. Yep, absolutely. Last year, uh, like I said, that golden goose for me last year, up out of temp, yep. big kings uh, on a regular basis in the morning. We run a raspberry carbon on a seven color, and we run it all the time. Not a raspberry carbon. Raspberry carbon. Not the on state record winning. Well, we run the regular size one, okay. but we've been doing that for years, and yeah. out of temperature, catching mature kings. Sure. All day long, July, August. I yep. mean, it's crazy. Yeah, you, you don't get as many as you do that are feeding down in temp or you know, no, later in the yep. day. Into, but you do pick up that nomad every well, now and then. It, uh, the way I look at it, it if you're running, you know, I, my normal spread is 14 rods. Um, I hardly ever run less than 12. Yeah. And uh, I normally will run five boards on each side. And that's how I like to... That's how I like to run it. But, uh, you know, so I always have a couple mm -hmm. extra lines that are out of temperature. Mm -hmm. And I catch a lot of fish on them. Yep, I'm the same way. Yep, 14 rod spread is about my normal go-to also. If I'm going to run nine rods, I don't know that I'm going to give up one gonna of the other yeah, rods. Which one to, are you going to sacrifice? To get a, a rod up high out of temperature. And then, so. you know, that, that's that's a tournament question that comes up every tournament oh, in my brain, too. Brutal. What Which one am I sacrificing for the other one? Yep. You know, and pre-fishing is so big about that as well, but you can still make the wrong decision any given day, any given day. But well, that's a totally yeah, different topic. That, that's a totally, good topic, though. It is a that good topic. That would be a good one to, to really have, like... Captain's Roundtable. Captain's Roundtable. That on. is a good, good, yeah. good topic. Nine rod spread, optimum tournament uh, time. Yeah, that'd be a really good one. What are some of your other favorites? So, yeah, lead core, I couldn't agree more. Lead core's got that really unique action to it, I think, with a light super slim or uh, really any spoon. It gives it a great action. It really does. Yeah. And... You know, I mean, it, rotators on on cores are they work well too, mm -hmm. um, but you do get you kind of really lend yourself to getting more tangles with a rotator on your cores um, or on uh, you know your coppers. But yeah, coppers and cores all the time. But really, divers, I especially when the kings are going mm -hmm. uh, first thing in the morning. Yeah. We most of the time we have spoons on divers, spoons on our highs at least. Yeah. You know. What is, what's your uh, leader length on your divers? On my divers, about 20 feet. About what my, mine's yeah. 18 to 20 feet. Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty slow. But with a spoon, feet. sometimes longer. And, yeah. And when it's, you know, when it slows down and, and you start not getting bit on your on your diver, put a 30 foot, mm -hmm. put a 30 foot lead, put a spoon on it, mm -hmm. and you'll be surprised, especially offshore. Yeah. Um, you know, cohos and, uh, and steelhead love yeah. to hit those. Yeah, uh, downriggers, of course, as well in the morning. Sure. You know, there's yeah. nothing wrong with it. I normally have the big white flasher on the, on the center downrigger. Yeah, we downrigger. have one, one out and down has a set of spoons on it. Yeah, every always. Day. Yep, uh, always day. for me, too. And by a set, you're talking main line and probably a slider. Yeah, a slider or a stack, yeah, yeah, depending yeah. on the temps. Yep, yep. And so, then, but we stack, you know, we'll, we stack our paddles. We stack uh, spin doctors and stuff, too, which... These Ludington guys. Just <laughs> like to get tangles. You know? I can lead you to the way of getting tangles. I, I can lead you just as well, I'm sure. But stackers catch a lot of fish. They and, do. And that spoon is just kind of mm -hmm. there. There's nothing really around it. Yeah. Um, I think it's a little stealthier, you, you know, than you, where you got a 14 pound cannonball with, with a. I agree. You know, I agree. Drag into the water with a bait behind it. What, uh, what size spoon do you prefer on your stackers? I like the, I really like the um, half series. The Moonshine Halves? The Moonshine Halves yeah. series. That's pretty common for us. Um, also the Yak, we run a, uh, we run a ton of Yak spoons. Um, they're kind of staple in Ludington. Yeah. Uh, probably a little bit up here. Oh yeah. You know, but they're, like in Ludington, uh, Doug Polcat, he just passed uh, a couple months ago and mm -hmm. you know, one of the best captains around. Nice guy. A nice like, guy, like but that. he has, Tons and tons, and Ged's keeping it going, so they're not going anywhere. Good. But, uh, yeah, the Jared is an awesome spoon. Uh, the Lightning, you know, Fireball. Yeah. But yeah. I we like to run those, too. We run those often on, on your, uh, on on your stacks. Downs, on our stacks, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I run a lot of Super Slims, of course. Super on, Slims, too. Yeah. On my, uh, if I'm stack, I rarely, rarely stack. And maybe that's something I need to look more at uh, yeah. if it's really good for you. Maybe that's something I need to look more at, but you know, on my free sliders, my fixed sliders, yep. a lot of super slims. Um, we have run the super bread, wonder bread, yes, SS. Yep, that's a great and one. That literally will run on an out and down. And if there's cohos around, so if you're catching kings 
and there is cohos around, you can run that all day and catch fish on it. Mm-hmm. Because those cohos will just annihilate that yep. for some reason. I don't know what it is, but that super bread is an awesome spoon. Do you ever run the, uh, I forget what, the, the WD size from Dreamweaver? The small uh, walleye spoons. Yeah, uh, I never I never have ran the WDs, but the LDs. Yeah. And and then the 40s, okay. which were the, um, the NK... 4D spoon, which is has like a bigger cup. Yeah, I used to run it a lot, and I kind of got away from it, and I've been slowly bringing it back. I use it a lot when I trout fish, okay, because it, it has a big cup in it, and it goes at that little bit slower speed. It yeah. still has a really great action. Yeah, but, one, one thing I've been doing is experimenting in the last couple of years with some of the Stinger Scorpions, some of the mini streaks. Mini streaks. We run yep. a ton of mini streaks. Like right now, we're running. Uh, for browns, lots mm-hmm. of mini streaks for browns. But I found on a free slider, even a fixed slider for kings, they'll gobble that thing. Yeah, they yep. love them. We yep. used to do it with the walleye, the uh, moonshine walleye spoons. Yeah, and we would catch mature kings out of them. Only bad thing is you only catch about two mature kings, and that spoon was yeah, you know, just wadded yeah, up. Yeah, destroyed. Wall, yep. Yeah, you'll find that with some of the thinner spoons, of course. Sure. Um, they're, they're, the Slims, the Dreamweaver. That's a tough spoon. That is a really, really you tough catch spoon. Catch a ton of fish on that, like you, a stinger. You catch five fish on a stinger and the paint's off. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just like a known thing. Yep. But the Super Slim they're, really holds up. Yeah, they're brutes. There's yeah. no doubt about it. You try to put a bend in these things. They're really, and, really yeah, thick. They're, yeah. Most of the DW spoons I found are that way, too. They're pretty stout. They Mo- are. Moonshine yeah. as well. Uh, pretty, yep. pretty stout. Yep. Yeks are, I put them in the medium class. Yeah, they're in the middle. Yeah, yep. but like you said, stinger. Yeah, that one's real flimsy. I've never run salmon candy, but I've heard a lot of people complain I, about those. Yeah, I've never ran them. Yeah. I've heard, I've seen a lot of forums, people complaining about the durability of the spoons. Sure. Seems to be really thin. But you get that flutter action. Yeah, I don't know. That's the thing. Like, you you have to give up that thickness because you can't be too thick. I can't, I'm not trash talking Sam and Candy at all. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're good. Yeah, I've never ran one. And I've never run one, but I'm just saying what I've seen some of the forums. So if you, if you have experience with that, hey, throw it in the comments. I would like to see that. Uh, How long a liter you run on a stacker line? Well, there's actually a law, um, and I I think Those that pesky laws. I think that it's I don't know is I think it's six feet. I think it is. I um I think seventy two inches and shorter, or it's yes. considered another line. Yes. Um. So of course, me being the law abiding citizen that I am, I, I follow that. Well, in in tournaments, it's specifically written seventy two in inches. And yes. So we always keep them. We never have a, a slider on the boat that's illegal. Yep. So it accidentally gets ran in a tournament or something. Yeah, I completely agree. My but opinion. I like I, I think that that five, six feet is where they need to be. I do too. A little yep. bit shorter. Yep. That's right where mine are. Yeah. Yeah, right where mine are. Um somebody says they just ordered some salmon candy, they'll update when we know something. Yeah. But um just uh if you start catching them, send me an email. Like if you you have a certain salmon candy, don't put it on forums. Send me an email. <laughs> let me know. So he can put it on his YouTube channel. No, or no, my no, YouTube I, channel. I got my little my little book. I'll just write <laughs> it in there. I'll only use it for myself. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that reminds me of what I was going to say earlier. Five new salmon flies are out. If you want to tie your new salmon flies for 2022, I just put that video out last night. Five new recipes. And what reminded me of that was one of those fly recipes is one of my super secrets. And I, oh. I decided to let it out this year, and uh, I, I'm sure people are going to do very well with it. But if you're interested in checking that out, go back to yesterday's video. Uh, PurpleTacoFlySupply.com is where you get all your material. You tie your own flies? Uh, I used to yeah. do more than I do now. Yeah, me um, too. But Kenny, uh, you know, KRW, KRW Kenny, man, yeah. he, he, I had three, three flies that he tied for me. Yeah. And that was pretty much the only flies I really ever used. I mean, yeah, I, I have a, just a great guy. I have a handful still that I still tie up for myself. The ones that I know really, really work. Yeah. But yeah, like you, you know, th- there's two or three other companies that I, I gravitate towards because I always have success with them. Yeah. You know, Riverside. I ch- Riverside Pickle, Pickle Sunshine, Sunshine, of course. Phenomenal Blue Fairways. Blue Fairways. You know, Blue Bubble Glow. Yeah, the Big A. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple other ones from KRW as well. Yeah, yeah. the um, what's the day? Is it Daybreak? Day. Oh, Daybreak. Yes. Yeah. yeah there is That's a KRW my, Daybreak. Like a light blue. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mirage Fly. Yep. It's got that little boy blue material in it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody just said Kenny was an awesome guy. He was. He was. Yeah, he, he was. was. I, spent, I spent a lot of time in in his trailer. 
time Dying. flies. Yeah, I heard about him drinking coffee. I heard about him back in the day. He, he could play cards and tie flies at the same time. Yeah, that's the the rumor that I heard. I never saw it, but that's pretty impressive. <laughs> he was a good guy. <laughs> that's really impressive. So, if you're going out um, and you're just getting into spoons, like Adam and I talked about, you're not going to go wrong with lead core. You're not going to go wrong with copper. You're not going to go wrong with weighted steel. You're not going to go wrong with downriggers. Oh, that's it. It's one of the easiest baits to run, like it you is. said. I and, think it is. And, you know, there's not a lot of failure points. No. It's not like you get a nick in your line on your on your um, leader. leader or something, mm -hmm. on a fly and it breaks or mm -hmm. something like that. I mean, it's a piece of metal really protecting the line from the fish. So. The, o the, only, the only other presentation I think would be in the same category as plugs. Yeah, but then sure. again, but then again, you get a plug that sometimes run a little wild on you, and you get and people forget that plugs dive. Yes. So if you have a seven color with a plug and a ten color inside it with a spoon, yep. Every time you bring that seven color across, you're probably going to you're in danger. Hold, yeah, so. you're in danger without a doubt. Uh, if you're going to take anything away from that, though, uh, and I completely agree with him because I do the same thing. Divers, if you're going to put spoons on your divers. Look at lengthen, lengthening out your leaders. I think that's a great yep. tip. Um, one thing I'll do sometimes in the morning, I'll run slide divers as my high divers. Sure. If I'm going to run spoons on them. Slide divers are, slide divers are really. Hey, you scared the heck out of me. I thought a rod went off. Slide divers, <laughs> slide divers are awesome. I mean, I don't think they're underutilized. Yeah. I think people that are getting into fishing. They don't know a lot about them. I know a lot of guys that don't mm -hmm. like long leaders because they have to hand line. They don't want to hand right, line. Right. You have a small boat. You don't have a lot of room. Slide diver is the way around that. Yes, it is. And uh, that, yeah, if, if you're looking for something to change your game, and they make all kinds of weights and bigger rings and stuff yeah. for them now, so they really do fish well. Yeah. Um, oh, that what you were saying. So if you are running a high diver set at three and a half mm -hmm. with a spoon. Mm -hmm. It's going to swim for some reason a lot farther out than it would if it. So you gotta keep that in mind. Sometimes I I'll, I'll set them to two and a half, yeah, instead yeah. of three and a half, just yeah. so that they don't come up outside In of your my boards. boards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get, so. ask me how I've learned that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I didn't learn that by reading that one there. No. <laughs> you probably Lots learned, of things. I'm sure you learned it the same way <laughs> I learned it. Yeah, that's mm. one of my favorite things to do in the morning. Sometimes if it's a really solid spoon bite. A lot of times my spoons just outfish my flash or fly meat rigs in the morning. I'm sure with you as well. Sure. Um, and that's a great way to get some more spoons out there. What am I so missing? Dakota, Dakota Joe is talking about the, the um, McDonald. So in Ludington on the 23rd, we have a tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, McDonald Memorial Polecat Tournament. Oh, nice. And uh, it's a brown, brown fishing tournament with... Uh, other categories as okay. well and it's way your best five so the brown is individual for each brown and then the way your best five is you can just weigh any five fish it can all be lake trout doesn't matter mm -hmm. what it is so it's really a fun tournament lots of prizes um payout's pretty good who's putting that on is it that, um get oh okay get straczynski puts it on it's through chucks you can sign up at chucks um but yeah that's an awesome little tournament so if you're looking for to get the boat out and shake her down. That's a good way to do don't it. Don't mind getting kind of cold. April 23rd, check it out. Do you have a minimum boat requirement? No. Okay, so any boat. Any boat, oh, yep. great. any boat can go. You can fish inside, you know, PM Lake if you want. You have to leave from Ludington okay. and return to Ludington. So gotcha. uh, that's the only real rule. Good, But good. yeah. Sounds like a great thing. It's a really fun tournament. I wish my boat was going to be in by then. I might, I might have run it down there and had <laughs> well, a little fun. I'm going to be on hiatus, so we're going to, oh. we, we got our whole tournament team. We're going to fish, so it should be pretty. Oh, fun. How can I stand up to you guys on your own home water? <laughs> 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 All right, uh, somebody just asked, and I was going to cover this. Does a split ring matter on a spoon? So what I got from Dreamweaver, split rings. If they don't need them, they don't put them on. Yep. Um, the super slims, the standards. Have a split ring. Yep. The mags have, have a, a split, split ring. ring. Super slims do not. If they don't have one on there, don't put it on there. These don't need them. They put them on the larger spoons because it gives them more action. And that's a that's a key thing too. Is that if you, if you change the hook, if you add a split ring, if you are using a different size hook, um, or a, a hook made of a different material, like a Vanadian steel mm -hmm. or a standard, uh, it changes the weight. 
in the balance of the spoon, it does. and it changes the action of the spoon. I'm not ignoring anybody. I'm just this is about ready to go. So, so I'm gonna... that being said, I mean, if you do, you know, it, you know, if you do uh, add a, a split ring or add a hook, you just got to remember that if that stops producing, remember that you made that change. Or if it starts producing better. You know that's that a little those little changes. It's a little details. It really is. Uh, you know, people, the more little details and the more dots that you can connect. And it, it's like Dan Keating says, um, you know, every bite is a story. And it's a good way to look at. And it. if you take the the information of every bite and start putting the pieces together, then you'll produce more bites. But that's a good tip with the spoons. Um, I've always said, you know, run them run them how they come out of the package. Don't you know? Try not to be adding stuff uh, oh you got uh, Dakota Joe says he'll take you oh thanks Joe I appreciate <laughs> that alright I'm trying to get my uh, my phone up and running here just so I can still see the chat as they come in I'd like to uh, be able to keep on going with this how do you tie a spoon with no splurring so um, a good question um, we are al almost always using ball bearing swivels um, and for a spoon, you know, we're using the smaller swivel, um, but size ones and twos. I'm, I'm never tying anything really directly to a okay. rod. I always want that swivel because it yep. takes a lot of pressure off yep. of your knot as Com well. Completely agree. And when you said uh, the devil's in the details earlier, you know who else says that all the time? George. Yeah. George Freeman. Yeah. Yep. And he, that's he's absolutely right, and you're absolutely George, right. George is like so. You said you know Paul mm -hmm. was like a, a mentor for you mm -hmm. and. and and George Freeman is definitely one of those yeah. for me. And I've been lucky, lucky, lucky to have fished with him quite a bit and spent a lot of time with him, talk fishing a lot. Yeah. Um, I ran his boat last year, you know, when he got hurt for him. And, uh, yeah, great guy. Yeah. He has a he has a great information, too, um, on his website, so freestylecharters.com. Yeah. Check that out. He was a fishing port for Ludington. Yeah, I, I go on yeah. there a couple times a week, actually, and check yeah. that out. FreestyleCharters.com, that's Captain George's website. If you're going out in Ludington, you can check that out. He puts out a ton, ton, ton of, great information. of good information. Absolutely. So let's talk about, and I know this is what a lot of people are waiting for, what are some of our favorite spoons? Yeah. And I'll, I'll start off with this. If you have not watched it yet, when this posts to YouTube, I'll put a link, I think, over here, maybe right above Adam's head. Uh, I did a, a video last year called Must Have Spoons. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, I went through about 30 spoons that I absolutely have in my boat, and they're always in my rotation, one, one way or another. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put that link up there. But let's talk about some of our, like, goes. Let's talk about spring. Let's start there. Spring, sure. Yeah. yeah what do, what so, do you got? Uh, you know, before, before the, uh, we, we start out, we're, we're fishing mainly um, browns and lake trout. Uh, but when the kings start to show up, mm -hmm. Um, one one of my I want to see here. I mean, Yak Jared is always there. Fireball is always yep. there. Um, another one is the Pearl with earrings. That those are always in my rotation from Yak. Um, green jeans, super slim, sure. skinny jeans. I guess is what they would call it. Uh, great spoon. Um, I really like the dancing anchovy in a mag when those kings start to show up. Uh, you're talking my language now. I don't know. I have one. You had one. I saw it. Oh, right here. Yeah. This is the UV one, or the RV. Uh, that is a killer spoon in cold water yep. before you get the thermocline set up. Yep. And it really works good the whole time, but that this has been a constant producer so of let's, kings for So let's me. actually talk about that real quick, um, the difference between RV and non-RV. Um, I got uh, one of each right here. I'm going to show everybody this. An RV or a UV puts a really unique um, shine on that spoon. And it's something that really reflects off the sunlight. The spoon without the RV or the UV tape does not have that reflection. This thing I love in the bright, bright, bright sunny days, the non-RVs or the standards, um, non-UVs, a lot of times are more early morning for me. Yeah. Um, but these RV ones, UV ones, you can run all day. The, the all UV... Day. You can run it all day because mm -hmm. it has that flash. You don't necessarily need to go to a silver, a spoon with more silver on it. Exactly. For sure. Yeah. All right. So springtime for me. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go back and go over the ones you said, but you definitely sold, sold some uh, that I really oh, like. Yeah. The Buffalo Bill. That thing's got an orange back on it. You can see it through that cutout right there. That Buffalo Bill is always going. 
Blue jean, or I'm sorry, uh, blue dolphin, green dolphin. Oh yeah, absolutely. always goes, especially with the. You got one? Here's a here's my my favorite modified. The uh, modified fuzzy bear. Yeah, awesome spoon. Yep, blue jean or uh, keep on. You know who made those? You know who made this spoon up? Mm -mm. Richard, Captain Richard Finn Power. No kid. Richard Loxanen came up with this. The modified? No, the dolphin. Really? That's his spoon. I had yeah. no idea. I had no idea. Uh, another one for me is the NBK, Natural Born Killer. Oh, great spoon. Yep, yep. great, great, great one. Uh, mixed veggies. I don't have one here with me, but that's yep. another one for me in Especially the spring. Especially in time. the spring. Me too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, really, you, you're not going to go wrong in the spring with some in your face, gaudy colors. Yeah. Yeah. Purples. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, really crazy colors. Yeah, like that Buffalo Bill there. I mean, if you look at that, that thing is. And it's really odd because generally in the spring, unless you're fishing in river water, the, the water's really clear it is. in the spring. Yeah. And it's why? why? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll I guess never... if you haven't eaten in a couple months. I suppose, yeah. Hungry. Like, hey, check that out. That looks <laughs> awful. Let's eat it. <laughs> All right, we move into uh, summer. And uh, what do we change in there for you? So I start to, uh, you know, I'll have those bright colors. I'll start to migrate into, into like, lots of blues. Yeah. And then um, as we go... For me, it's as we're fishing deeper and deeper and deeper, um, you know, we start getting into some greens yep. and, and things. But I don't know that there's like a wrong, wrong way to do it. No, there's I, not. I think I get stuck in these patterns of, of what I've always done, and, and I just go back to that. And there's some young guys in Lovington that are running bloody nose mm -hmm. and 90 down, mm -hmm. and they're catching fish on them. Sure. And I would never even think to do it. And yeah. I do it because they tell me that they do yeah. it, and it works. Yeah. But um, I like, you know, the uh, some of the blacks, uh, the raspberry carbons. Yeah. Um, obviously, I mean, that's that spoon's proven itself. But um, also crab face is another one. Uh, I run a lot of those. Some and, of the ones that really have uh, shown for me over the last few years, and these are, these are, you know, I like what you said about blues because I found once June gets here, if there's some kings around, mm -hmm. they do like the blues. Um, but you're not going to go wrong with really something green or blue as the, as the season progresses on. Yep. Some of the ones have gone really good for me over the years. That purple nurple right there in the morning, oh, yeah. that thing has a really unique glow to it. It's a purple glow. And, and it's got dots. And it's got dots. It's got to be the dots. Got dots. So that purple nurple um, is almost always out for me in the morning. Or the jackal. The jackal yep. is real sure. similar yep. to that. Sure. Um, that one for me, that glow yeah. frog white belly, that thing has been a staple on my boat for many, many years. Um, our tournament boat, that thing catches fish. <clears throat> That's a really, it really comes to life in July. It really does. When that thermal client starts to set up, that that frog pattern is killer. Super good. And in the spring, too. Don't forget it in the spring. Oh, no. It really does work. Lake Trout love that yeah. thing. They gobble that thing up. That white back. The uh, the one you already showed was that uh, Glow Bloody Nose in the, in the RV. I really like it in the RV. The watermelon, also in the RV. I mean, how many fish have been caught on a watermelon? Yeah. How many? I mean, it could never count. <laughs> Who doesn't have one of those? I know. <laughs> you know. You know, I don't run that one enough, though. Yeah. Um, I know it catches fish, and I'll I'll sit there, I'll pull my spoon box, my spoon drawer open, and I'll look at the the watermelon, and I go, ah, yeah, that's a good one, and I'll grab something else. Yeah. I don't know why I do that. And then when I put it out there, it catches fish. So that thing is a staple. And this one for me. Last year on a 10 color, this thing was unstoppable. That's that Dreamweaver Super Slim A Bomb. That thing, did you oh, run yeah. this at all last year? Yeah. God, that thing that was, was a great good. spoon. Stupid good. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, we, you know, this is a, another one that uh, in that July, early August, uh, the Yak Lightning. Yeah. And it's, it's glow, it, you know, it's really close to a lemon ice, but it has glow paint on the one side. And that's just a, an awesome spoon. They only had it in bag. They were sold out of like everything when I was at Chuck's the other day. Yeah. And then that, the Warp Frog, and they make a lot of different ones, uh, glow back, white back, uh, and silver back. Yes. I have all of them. We have, literally have an entire Plano box of just Warp Just frogs. Just yet, yeah. just yet Warp Frogs. I've got I'm, a section of Super Slim Frogs. Uh, the same yep, thing. Same so thing. these are really, and these are old. You know, like mm -hmm. you said, this is a, one of the oldest spoons around. Yeah. And there's variations of it, but they're really about all about the same. They all really do, do catch, catch fish. They do very well. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, that's uh, summertime moving into fall. Sure. I start running a lot more mags uh, with some Slims in there, of course. I really start leaning heavier on the mags, I think, when August shows up. Yeah. Uh, you know, bigger bigger fish, 
Um, bigger ale wipes by that time of the year yep. as well. Um, more turbulence in the water, more flash in the water. Kings are actually starting to think about not eating anymore. You know, it's getting towards the end of the life cycle. It's more of an irritation thing. It's more of an irritation yeah. thing. So I really start leaning heavier on the mags. Not saying slims and standards aren't going to catch a fish, but the mags really do start shining right then. Um, what what do you got uh, later in the fall? Anything that really stands out for you? So or by like, fall I mean August. Like, yeah, August that salmon. Uh, I mean, we're running a ton of green jeans. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is just I don't know. That I, I is see just we, a staple. I and then see if there's one on the on the board here. The black, um, you know, black spoons with black in them. Uh, that Oscar spoon. Uh, crab face is another one that I really like. Those are both from Moonshine. Um, the fuzzy bear. I have some fuzzy bear green green jeans. I don't know that they actually make them, but they may be making them this year. So there's going to be some fuzzy bears out. That's a really good blank. Um, I really enjoy that in a mag. I haven't left yet. Don't worry. Oh no problem. I mean we're running a lot of plugs and uh, and we kind of are mixing the spoons in. But one spoon that pretty much is always in our rotation is and usually in several locations uh, five color seven color and then also on an out and down is that wonder bread uh ss wonder bread and i don't know what it is about the ss wonder bread and the skinny jeans but they they just produce it doesn't seem to matter um it doesn't seem to matter if the the fish are more keyed in on on those big mag spoons we still have them in our spread and they still produce fish yeah green jeans blue jeans I yeah mean, yeah i almost found myself well also the raspberry carbon raspberry carbon is a great spot when, when i started thinking about the raspberry carbon and the blue jeans and the green jeans there's days i don't run them because i know everybody else is yeah and there was a time over the last season um i for a couple of weeks i just didn't run them uh and it seemed like they weren't producing as well as they normally were um yeah. This could just be my my own brain doing twisty things in my head. But <laughs> you honestly, have to have confidence in what you're running. You do. Because you really other, do. It, otherwise it messes with you. Yeah. And I think there's those sometimes when the fish see something so much, um, they turn off to it. Yep. Um, yep. I don't know if that's legit or not, but I, I've seemed to find that happen several times. Um, so, yeah, there's times I have not run the blue jeans, the green jeans, but they are such good spoons. They are. The raspberry carbon, stupid good spoon. I didn't run it for two weeks last year after the guy caught the state record. Ran, left it in the box for two weeks. As soon as I put it out, it started catching fish. I saw. I, <laughs> I, I was literally like one mile ahead of him. Where you? And you drove over. I, I'm in the same water, and I he had a 350, I think, weighted steel. Yeah. I had a 300 uh, copper with a bag raspberry carbon. I mean, I figured that that fish probably came up, saw mine. Yeah. And then oh, I back see. and got hit. I, I you know, see. It's the only you, way it could have happened. It's just crazy then. If, if you think about that state record fish, how many boats do you think have gone over that thing? Or how there? many people have hooked it? True. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. hook a fish like that? Right. How right. many people are going to, like, on a charter? Right. I don't like to slow down. No, you I know. know. You want to keep the bites keep coming. Keep going, right. That is a heck of a fish. And he said that fish was hooked on the top and the bottom no of the jaw, so its mouth was shut. He's it lucky. Use its, yeah, oh, he's man. lucky. He's lucky. Can imagine in the river. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> it have been amazing. Uh, a couple of other ones I go to really hard in the in August time. Here's that blue jackal that I talked about a little while ago. That thing in the morning. It looks just like the original moonshine. So I run one of those, um, but it's the it's the the half moon. It, no, it's it it's not the jackal. It has another name, but it looks just like the spoon. The moonshine looks just like the original moonshine called the moonshine, moonshine spoon. Moonshine. It looks just like that. Yeah. Uh, but that that's is, a great spoon. It, it really is. Talking about that that Wonder Bread, you know, there's the Super oh, yeah. Bread. There it is, right there in standard. Really, Wonder Bread is another one. That you got to have if, two or three. If of you those. don't, if you don't have a SS Wonder Bread, you should buy six of them. Yeah, that's what you should do. <laughs> and if your wife gets mad, tell her I told you that. That's, yeah, give her Adam's <laughs> phone number, will you? That's the Green Jeans and Super Slim. If you have not seen one before, I wanted you to get a look at it. Phenomenal spoon. It is. It really that is. really does a game changer spoon. Oh yeah, yeah. The flounder, flounder pounder. How flounder did you not even mention that? Flounder pounder. <laughs> so I'll tell you a quick story. The, was... You know, the Mongolian beef mm -hmm. is another. Like, we talked about the dancing anchovy. Yeah. And then the beef eater from uh, Dreamweaver. Almost same spoon. Same spoon for the most part. Mm -hmm. Those are killer too. Yes, they are. 
A Mongolian beef, oh, that's of course. A good one too. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I didn't I know. even think about that one. But t- the flounder pounder, I was mating for a guy, and I won't say who. Um, he would not run a flounder pounder because he thought it was the ugliest spoon <laughs> ever made. And it is kind of a homely spoon. It is. But I kept running it on my side and just destroying fish. So I, we get done on our trip, and uh, I clean the fish, and he's down on the boat. And I go down there, and he's down there in the cabin at the table, drawing up something on a, on a spin doctor or a paddle. He made a flounder pounder <laughs> replica, so, and he was trying to hide it. <laughs> I don't want you to see this. But that flounder pounder, especially... In the RV tape as well, yeah, really will go all day for you and they, as well. They have that the blue one is good too. It is. They're both. Uh, well, I mean, they have a whole series of them, and they're all good. But it the, really the blue is. and the green are definitely ones you should have. And one of the other ones I just discovered in the last couple of years. Yeah, me too. The green night and, and the, the blue. blue night. That's the blue night from Moonshine. Um, that thing is really the green night. Also, both those. Yeah, Alex. Uh, Alex Bialik up here, mm-hmm. Fireplug Charters, Captain Alex. He. Uh, he goes, man, I'm catching him on Green Knight. I'm catching him on Green Knight. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. This is a couple right. years ago. And uh, he sends me a picture, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I got those. You know, and I put it out, <laughs> and I've been running it ever since. So thank you, Alex. <laughs> yeah. I just gave you your tip away. <laughs> I, I tuned up on that spoon, you know, a couple years ago also in the Green Knight, and then I had to get the Blue Knight because the Green Knight was working so well. And uh, lo and behold, they both catch fish. Yep. Um, you touched on it earlier, and I just want to make another mention on that. Moonshine has a series called the Half Moon series, yep. which are yep. really, really good. I don't know if you have any or not. I have one with me. This is the Mai Half Moon. So but. what they are is uh, really one side of the blank is chrome, yep. and the other side is painted. And uh, and it's smaller. It is smaller. It's and like, they have a mag and a regular. Yes. And the regular's smaller than a regular Moonshine. It is a unique. And the mag is smaller than the mag. It's so a unique size. They're really yeah. good spoons. And when these are hot, and the green shorts is the half size, or the half moon series of green jeans. Mm-hmm. And that's a Wait, let me see. Which one killer. is that? That's a mahi. That's a mahi. Yep. Well, I might have to get one of those. That is a good looking those spoon right there. might be a Chuck's only. I don't nice. know. But anyways, that's a good spoon. Um, another one that I found in the half moon series, the green slice. Oh yeah, was uh, really working for and me. And the blue slice yes. and the orange slice. Yeah, that's a whole that that was Mark Mark Williams from uh, uh, Silver Addiction, Captain okay. Mark. He, he's right next to me. We're on Little Point, and he is like, boom, boom. I'm like, <laughs> Mark, what are you doing? Why am I not catching fish and you're catching these fish? And he goes, Do you have the slice? I'm like, I don't know what the slice well, is. He sent you and, a picture. Uh, yeah, he sent me a picture. Did you have it? And I did not. Uh, no, but I did after that. Right after that charter, I had about 12 of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I turned on to that thing, I think, uh, uh, really good spoon. last year sometime, or maybe it was the year before. It was another one of those spoons where I opened my spoon drawer, and I looked at it probably 50 times. I went, ah, you know, I got these yep, other things yep, that I know yep. work. And then one day, I was like, okay, it's going out. And I'm glad it went out, because that thing was destroying them. Yeah. Yeah, really, really good. There's a, uh, you know, but that's, that's why it's good to talk. Mm-hmm. And especially with spoons, you know, I mean, and if you're, if you're talking to people and you're in similar waters, even if you're not necessarily in the same port, but water conditions are similar and, uh, they're hitting it, you know, on whatever that spoon is, uh, try to find something that looks like that yeah. and try to find something with the contrast. So if it has dots, dots, if it has a herring bone down the center, you know, that kind of stuff, pay attention to contrast of spoons, how it glows, how it doesn't glow. If it's part silver, you know, like the half series, or you know, silver back, gold back, all of those little pieces are important. They truly are to 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 the puzzle. So. Truly are. Um, you know, the, there's so many things to figure out, and, and that, that's such a, just a great way to say it. It's just another piece in that puzzle. Yeah. Your speed and your temp, of course, are your two biggest things. Oh, yeah. Speed and temp, current direction. Yeah. Those are your biggest things. Okay. After you get that figured out you got to start looking at the little things um sky condition is it is it foggy is it clear uh what's the wave condition is it letting light down through yep. is it big waves yep. little waves little waves um so many little things and then you, you could stay up at night losing sleep trying to think should i run the half moon series yeah. or should i run the regular series and it'll drive you nuts well and, and you can't it's really hard to remember all of the information. It is. And I I keep a log, and um, 
I'll go back like year like I'll take my log from July 18th and I'll go back to the year before mm-hmm. July 18th and I'll go back the year before July mm-hmm. 18th and the year before and as long as the water are doing similar things yeah you'll be surprised how many things you'll see repeat repeat yeah. repeat you know one thing I learned from I mentioned this actually just last week uh, I mentioned it in a seminar I did not long ago also one guy taught me a long, long time ago, when you put your waypoints into your fish find, if you're going to yep. keep waypoints, yep. mark them with a date. Oh, yeah, sure. And go yep. back and look at the dates and put it all into a spreadsheet and look at all that data. And you'll see the pattern. And, and it, if you keep a written log, that's even better because you can keep what spoon it was, what size it was, what color it was, um, a lot more information than you really put into a waypoint. So really, really a good, good tip right there from Captain Adam. Yep. What are we seeing here? All kinds of stuff up here. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 open it up to your questions. We haven't been able to see many of them because the big screen went down. I got the little screen going, but we're going to pay attention question. right now. What do you got? Squids. Somebody yeah. just said, uh, do you, do you uh, so squids are uh, like rubber body mm-hmm. uh, squids that you used to use instead of flies. And we are starting to experiment more and more with them and bringing them back and adding fly bodies over the top. And a yeah. lot of different things. Um, I think they still work. I know they, they glow. Still work. I know they um, still work. I, I think uh, if you have some, mess around with them. Yeah. But pay attention to lead lengths because that's going to change. Yeah. Yep. Your fly lead length is going to change a little bit with a squid. I'll say so. this uh, about squids as well. Don't be afraid to use them for lake trout teasers. They they work really well there also. You can pick that right up. Take a look Put here. WD the WD forty trick. <laughs> I, I, I don't do that. I don't either. Uh, I do use herring oil, yep. um, which essentially is similar. Okay, so here's a question that I've gotten several times in the past. Spoons behind big flashers or spoons behind flashers. We were just talking about this, too. Yeah. This is crazy. That, that's um, a common question. I, I do not, and I, I can't say I ever have, but I have talked to other people that have, and they've had success with them. So you're, you're just you're turning the corner a different way, really. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing it, and if it works for you, I think it works. It's not wrong. Um, I actually know it works because I've done it before. Um, but the only reason I've ever done it is because someone told me they were doing it. Uh, you know, it wasn't something I would try mm-hmm. on my own. Mm-hmm. I don't think. But there again, if you start messing with like a paddle with a spoon behind it or a ten-inch spinny with a spoon behind it, your lead, your length of your lead That's is going to change. So yeah, you gotta. I would say the longer the longer, lead would probably be yeah. better because the spoon has an action all its own. It doesn't need the rotator to impart any action onto it. So a longer lead would probably be better. Um, somebody wants to know, uh, Ryan wants to know, when using staggers on down and outs, do you match the lures um, or not? So bottom bottom spoon, match yeah. the top spoon. Somet- I'll say sometimes. I will say 90% of the time I'm matching them. Yeah. Um, for me, it's always uh, the bigger one down below, smaller one up top. It, and it's the same for me. Yeah. However, in Lake Ontario, they do it the other way. Well, that's Lake Ontario. I so know. I don't know. I'm going there soon <laughs> to do a show out there, and Great. I'm going to experiment with this. Great. No, they I have don't... a name for it too, and I can't remember what it is. It's a good name. Lake Ontario is an amazing, <laughs> amazing fishery. Amazing fishery. I'm actually jealous of it sometimes. Um, somebody saying, "Yeah, they would flip flop." What else we got here? Uh, Warren Wenzel saying, my dad and my grandfather used WD-40 all the time, uh, 30 years ago. That was yeah. 30 years ago. A lot of guys do it on plugs in the river. Um, they, you know, a lot of people would swear by it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think herring oil was, like, readily available then. Right. And I've always used herring oil. Yeah. Um, or the lunker, you know, they're, they Whatever, have all these different names. There's a but, whole bunch of stuff out yeah. there now, yeah. Uh, we put herring oil on <laughs> one tournament. We put herring oil on on baits in four foot waves, yeah. and a twenty six foot boat, <laughs> and we looked like drunk ballerinas smashing into each other on the back so of that boat. So slippery if you get it, it on the floor. It was so slippery. Yeah. Be really careful. That's and a good point. We, and WD forty is too. We had a heck of a time getting that stuff out of the boat. We just looked like morons, more though, more so than usual. Um, do we use the uh, the Bigfoot rotator by Dreamweaver at all? So when it first came out, I used it a little bit, and um, it doesn't. The way that I fish, it doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't had a lot of success on it. I know some guys have had good success with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some other large rotators that I like to use, yeah. and I, I t- tend to 
gravitate towards those. I'm but same thing. Eight inch yeah. spinny, ten inch spinny, and uh, uh, the small ones too. When you said the coho spinny, yeah. <coughs> um, I actually do pretty good. I have a couple of those rigged up with meat rigs. Yeah. And they work very well on on cores. That's interesting. So, I've never thought yeah. that. And then in the opposite sense, I have a lot of meat rigs w- <clears throat> hooked up on my big eleven inch panels. Yeah. Uh, which a lot of people don't. I think don't that. run. Yeah. I. I have ran the 11 inch paddle with meat rigs. I've never really been that successful. I've had, I've had good and success with that. Yeah. Then I'd talk, you know, you talk, but this is a, goes back to the whole yeah, point that, yeah, you know, right. it, everybody, there's a lot of different ways to do it. But. There is. Um, and I'm with you on the on the Bigfoot. Um, when it first came out, I ran it with limited success. Yeah. There was a lot of tournament fishing back then with Jim and the other guys. Very limited success. And I think we're in the same boat. We fish in a different way that that thing really shines with. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, I think it. I, I definitely think it, it. It can work. Yeah. But it does, the way that I fish, it, it doesn't seem to produce. So, so. Philip Quinn wants to know. Uh, he knows my answer already. But do you ever run a three color off your downrigger? So, uh, I don't really. Um, the secret. The secret weapon the SWR, rig. SWR. Uh, yes. I really don't. Um, I just lengthen the lead of my downrigger. Mm-hmm. I, I'll put a hundred foot lead on a downrigger. Mm-hmm. I don't. You know. So essentially, similar similar thought. I think it's yeah. similar. Um, I know some people that do it. Um, I think that the lead core reacts with the thermocline different, differently. I think it hangs up a little bit, and I think it can help your bait kind of sit in there on top of the. And pocket. it definitely does yeah. have you know that slower action. It kind of slows it all down. So. Now I've I've done it many times in the past, and the best way I found the best presentation are, are plugs on those three colors. Yeah. Because like you said earlier, they do dive, and they and if lake core is pre- preventing from whatever reason from getting in the area that I want it to, those sure. plugs seem to dig a little yep. better. Um, yeah. Good. Good question though. Good. Good question. I think it's a bigger deal when you don't have a shoot rigger. Yeah. Because the shoot rigger, you because you can run that. On, a, on your out and down, you can run that secret weapon rig, and it really, you can get it, you know, kind of get that mm-hmm. action to change a little bit. Yeah. But the way that I'm fishing with three downriggers almost always, yeah, um, I, for me, it doesn't, doesn't good, seem to work. Good point. Yep, good, good point. Um, you ever heard of the 100 foot rule? That's a rule that I heard a long, long time ago, and I was going to bring it up tonight for spoons. And I'm glad somebody said, you said 100 feet on your leaders. So 100 foot rule, if you're just getting into to leader links on your downriggers, this is where this comes in. When I first learned this, somebody said, hey, always add up to 100 feet. So if you're 30 feet down, oh, yeah. make your leader link 70 feet. If you're 50 feet down, make your leader link 50 feet. So you always equal 100. Once you get below 100, make it 15 to 20 feet standard. Um, that That's a thing that we didn't touch on, but leader links on downriggers for spoons can be pretty crucial. But that's a good way to get you in the in the ballpark. Just starting off. Yeah, I I uh, it depends on the bait that I'm running my leader length. Mm-hmm. Um, but as you get deeper and deeper, and, and we fish deep, yeah. um, you know I'm very often fishing below 200 feet. Yeah. Um, with 20, we have 23 pound cannonballs that we're, we're running on our magna metals, and uh, I will give a word of wisdom if you're if you're fishing a rotator down 250 feet. If you put a hundred foot lead on it, it is going to come up wherever it wants. So the shorter, shorter is definitely a little bit better. Absolutely. The deeper you get. Yeah. Uh, the deeper you go, I always say minimize, 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 minimize. Less presentations down deep. You can still have some long lines out there, but when you start trying to cram everything down in those yeah. deep, deep you, waters, we call it getting greedy. You get yeah. greedy. You get tangles. You lose fish. Yeah, you pay the price on that. Yeah. Is what happens. We uh we when we were. What, the year that we won uh, the big boy, I think. The year that we won the big boy in Ludington. Well, you won that one too? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, we uh, turn this away. We, we were fishing lake trout. We were bou- b- bouncing bottom in like 210 feet of water for trout. And we had, we got greedy. We tried to get more rods down there. And we had a very quality trout get into a wire diver on the way up and we lost the fish. That's and that fish probably would have won us. Not, the, not the a good feeling. Classic too. Not so. a good feeling. Don't get greedy. Don't get greedy. <laughs> yeah. That that's a totally different topic for another day too. But yeah, fishing lake trout in 150 to 200 foot of water on the bottom. You oh can, yeah. You can do it. Uh, it takes the right gear. It takes the right gear. But uh, you can do it. Yeah. If you want that too, uh, real to real outdoors, we have 
a whole video with some excellent deep water trout fishermen. Yeah. Uh, that we did in July of yep. last year. So check that out. From uh, Ron Reitz, uh, do you two captains think most of these colors discussed will cross over into the bays of Traverse City uh, at the times of the year that we spoke of? Huh? I, I could see it, no I, reason why they wouldn't. I think that if you pay attention to water temperatures, um, I know that the water is colder up there mm -hmm. most of the year. and uh, But uh, that too, uh, if you want some Traverse Bay information, I'd... I have a real-to-real -real captain roundtable with a couple of captains from um, Traverse Bay, and we yeah. talked yeah. a lot about the different spoons. But um, Luke, who's a captain up there, Springside, he he'll come down and fish with me before they get the Kings there, and he'll see what we're doing, mm -hmm. and then he'll take what we're doing on mm -hmm. the Kings when the Kings show up there. He's using the same tactics, just transfer it and over, transfer it. But and it's later because of water temperatures. Sure, absolutely. And, the, and these colors, I think, really, if if you stuck these out in Oregon, on. state of Washington, yeah. they're going to work. Um, there, there's certain things about these colors that just plain work. Salmon or salmon, no matter yeah. really where you go in the world, and they're programmed really all the same way. They're programmed to eat, and they're programmed to feed, they're programmed to put on weight and then die after however many years, say, four years, sorry. Um, there's no reason that these spoons, if you took them up to wherever you want to fish, you're going to find a few of these that are going to work for you, without a doubt. And we, you know, we use some of, especially the SS spoons, we'll use them on inland lakes. Oh, for pike, pike and walleye. Pike and walleye. Oh, yeah. And it's unbelievable how yes. well they work for that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, really good question, though, Ron. Really good question. Uh, do we run Brad's cut bait rigs? I tried them, and I steered away from them. And nothing wrong with them. I know they work out in the Pacific Northwest, but they did not work for me. And maybe I just didn't give them enough time. Uh, you know, when you're running charters, yeah. you need fish in the boat. Yeah. And I think that's maybe where I went wrong. I didn't give them enough time. Uh, but I they, just I steered away from them. I will say that they do work. Um, they don't work for me. But the boats right. that I fish with and communicate with on a regular basis, they fish them. And they do well. They tie the rigs up and bring them. Like, I get the rig exactly what they're using. Mm -hmm. I can't catch fish on them. They do. It's crazy. <laughs> um, you know, but they, a lot of tournament success in the last couple of years for those guys came on those rigs. So. Good, good question, though. And again, I'm not ignoring anybody. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm reading comments right now because my big screen went down. Uh, what release do I use on my downriggers? I use the Dreamweaver Dead Set release. It has a Blacks release between yeah. two bungee cords. I don't know what you use. Blacks, yeah. Yeah. Blacks are it, the best. The best. Yeah. They really are. Yeah. I've, I've, I think I've used all of them. So old walkers are really good, too, but that, you can't get them anymore. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Rollo wants to know, uh, Chris and Adam, what are our thoughts on the coming season? Do we think the number we'll see the numbers and size continue to get better? Uh, go ahead. Well, I, this is it's funny that these people. Are, so I talk fishing a lot with um, with my friends, group of captains, and uh, we were just talking about this. And I mean, as much as I want to be optimistic about the quality of the year, there's no reason that this year will be any different than last year, mm -hmm. because really, the, all the information is the same. But two years ago, there's no reason that that year was different than last year. Was going to be different, right. So I mean, I don't right. know until we get until we get um, you know the consent decree figured out and we get uh, more salmon being planted. I think it's just going to be water temperatures. Pray for not a lot of east wind in the spring. You know, mm -hmm. hopefully we get those fish here and they stay. Right. I, think I don't know. There's not a lot of fish. There's a lot less salmon than there has been. We are truly blessed in Manistee and Ludington because we have the Manistee River systems, the Pure Marquette River. Good returns, yeah. We have excellent natural reproduction, excellent uh, returns. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I like what you're going with there, and I agree with a lot of that, but I do like to also look at trends. And the last five years has trended up. Yep. And seeing what I saw last year and the last two years, really, in alewife population, growth and size, health, um, really gives me great hope that the Kings are going to be able to have the forage that they need to continue to, yeah. to improve in size and numbers. Oh, I think they're going to be big. Because yeah. if they're going to be healthy, they're going to reproduce just in this exponentially in the same way. Um, so I, I, first off, like you just said, I think we're going to have big fish this year. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to have some really big fish. If it's the same numbers that we had last year in this area, I'm going to be pretty happy. If it's better, I'm going to be even happier. Yeah. Um, because I really 
compared to 10 years ago, last year was a godsend. Last two years was really so much different than what it was 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, hopefully, you know, I, I, don't, I wouldn't want the job to manage uh, the fishery. Um, I, I'm not a, a, what do they call that? Biologist? Uh, well, yeah, I'm not. I'm not a smarter person. <laughs> I'm not going to sit back and like say they shouldn't have done that. I would have done. Oh, it and I'm sure quarterback. I'm not that yeah. guy. Yeah, you know, um, I don't want to make those decisions, but I do think that it's time to start planting more salmon, and I think that the science is behind planting more salmon. Yeah. And you know, as sportsmen, we need to be more involved, and we need to educate yourself about what's going on. Reach out to the people that need to hear from you. Um, it's you know, uh, I, I have no. We're we're, we're really are uh, not getting what I think needs to happen. So I, I don't want to get into it. No, like no, that, I completely understand. I'll I, just it's a conversation that if just, you don't understand what's going on, like you just, right, you got to ask those questions. Just to so. piggyback on that, I, I completely understand why they're not stocking because they're playing it safe. You know, yep. they don't want yep. the crash. So I, I understand why they're not, but I completely agree with you that I think that our ecosystem right now could handle increased numbers. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the science backs it up, Yeah, and I think there's politics. So Thomas Hurley, thanks for the super chat, Tom. Really nice of you to support the channel. Um, I'll split it with Adam. I'll, I'll buy him a <laughs> cup of coffee or something. Oh, I'm sure I'm missing a few chats here. Make sure I'm not missing anything really, really big. Okay. Why does a fish stop hitting on a spoon from 10 years past, then not today? Or why do fish stop hitting on a spoon from 10 years past, then not today? I, or then maybe does today, I think that's what they're trying to say. Um, that's from John Houseman. You know, I, I really don't know what to comment on that. I, like we talked about earlier, I think a lot of those older spoons still produce fish. I think they do. Yeah. I, I think that the water is tremendously clearer than it was. Mm -hmm. And the water conditions... If you look at Lake Ontario, Lake Ontario, I think, has dirtier water than we do here. Um, they have, you know, more, not not dirty, like polluted, but this, there's more color to the water. And I, I think that some of those spoons that really work better, maybe up higher in dirty water, we just don't have the water. Yeah. You know, we're fishing deeper and deeper and deeper. There's less light penetrating into those. The depth, as you go through the water column, you start to lose colors. So there's a lot of things that come into play, but I think the waters, the clarity of the water, at least in Lake Michigan, is really changing. Yeah. I wish I actually would dirty back up a little. I would do. <laughs> I do too. Um, somebody named Joe C is uh, typing in all caps, so he's screaming at me here. I think he wants this question asked. What do you think about the J-plugs? Joe, that's a great question, but that's going to be a different topic for a different time. Um, that, that, that could be a whole night. Talking yeah, about there's, right there's there. tons and tons of that's a good that that's a good yeah. one though. I mean, yeah, I'd, actually, I'm, I'm sure you'll cover it. I, yeah. I have some uh, videos on plugs, um, the different kinds of plugs. Maybe it would be good to do like a true breakdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so if you're just catching up, so set, tonight is salmon spoons. Um, we're in this back to basic series. So tonight is spoons. Next week will be flash or fly. The week after that will be meat rigs, and the week after that will be plugs. And I'll have a different guest every time hopefully as long as i can uh, bribe them or blackmail them into coming uh, yeah you make one mistake in manistee county and all of a sudden you gotta <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> uh your 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 reputation is just fine Adam. you don't need to worry about that um okay do you clean your spoons if so do you clean after you catch fish do you use scents on your spoons from steve eddie I, that's a good question yeah. um one thing that I do, and I, I don't clean my spoons, but my spoons really never get dirty. Um, I dry all of my spoons before I put them away. I never put spoons away wet. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, the colors stay better. Mm -hmm. They stay cleaner. They don't rust. Yeah. Um, yep. That's a huge thing. Same here. Uh, Same here. So yep. that, that's, I would say, you know, I don't use uh, scents on my spoons. No, I don't either. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, give and take out there on certain scents that might work better than others, certain cleaning methods that might work better than others. But until you put like strong empirical data right in front of me yeah. and show it to me on the boat, I'm going to stick with what works. I'm, right I'm now. hard to change my. I am too, and yeah. maybe that's wrong, but I am. All right, hey, we are 
236 people here. Thank you, awesome. everyone, for being here. We're an hour and a half almost into this thing, so we're going to start wrapping this up. If you have something that absolutely has to be asked, ask right now, and uh, I'll, I'll make sure to get it out there. But otherwise, I want to... Uh, Lake O is gray or greener. A lot of people are greener, talking about yeah. uh, that king water. They have it in on the southern part of the lake too. That green water. We don't. Mm -hmm. We really don't have it. Like no. here in Manistee and Ludington, we have a tremendous amount of current, mm -hmm. um, it, and we really don't have a lot of different colors of water mixing. No, it's it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. It's pretty darn clear. We got a lot of sand. That you can see <laughs> every day. <laughs> most most days you can see the sand pretty pretty clearly. All right. Uh, liter length for your spoons off a dipsy. Um, somebody wanted to get that out real quick. I go 25, 30 feet. Yeah, 25, 30 Minimum feet. of 20. Yeah. Sometimes I will change. So one thing, I, depending on your swivel, I always have a swivel that's um, set up for spoons. Um, I'm not running a big swivel on that anymore. And also, a lot of times, I run 40-pound floral and I will step down to 25 pound floral if I'm gonna put a spoon on there. Yep. But you gotta be careful because yeah. the big bite's still gonna happen, the dipsy's Destroy. still gonna react the way that it's going to, and yep. and you gotta be careful, but I do believe it works. So I'm the exact same, I step down on my poundage for spoons, but I don't use floral, that's the only difference. And we have divers that we specifically use for spoons, and we write on them for spoons, and then what pound test is on there, so you don't accidentally grab that diver and put a meat rig on it or something to have it break off. Yeah. So, just a tip. Alex Morrow just wants to know, braid divers uh, with a spoon, is it th still three to one for depth? If you're on setting number three, it's gonna be pretty darn close. Pretty close. Yep, pretty darn close. All right, do you tie a swivel on your line and use a snap or, a, or use a snap? Okay, let me start that again from Dave. Dave or Stout, do you tie a swivel on your line and use a snap or use a snap swivel? I use a snap swivel. I use a snap swivel. Yeah, I use the Dreamweaver swivels. Yep, me as well. Yep. Fantastic swivel. Uh, a lot of people saying great show. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. Captain Nav, hey. thank you so much for thank being you, here. Captain Chris. I had a great time talking with you. I hope we can do this again sometime. Um, I'll get you back on the channel. Yeah, for if sure. I can, I'd love to. If I can talk and, to you. And the it. same, I'd love to get you up and or uh, maybe even go out and shoot a show together. Love to. Uh, out yeah. on the water. Would love to. We'll actually see some fishing. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's so close. So close. Sometimes I actually catch <laughs> I'm fish, I'm so excited. Too. I know, I am too. Um, all right, let's sign off there. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Again, check out purpletacoflysupply.com for the video just came out last night. We have Dipsy Divers back in stock if you need those. And thanks again to Dreamweaver for sponsoring the Sunday Night Live Streams. Absolutely. If you need anything from Dreamweaver, dreamweaverlures.com, they will get you hooked up with what you need. Good people and good products. All right, yeah. let's get out of here. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.